Hey everyone, have you ever felt like uh, you're trying to solve this giant social security puzzle? Trying to figure out when to actually claim those benefits. It's a question we get all the time. It really is. And it's a big decision. Uh -huh. I mean, it can keep people up at night. Yeah. So that's exactly why we're doing this deep dive today. We're going to try to sort through it all together. Absolutely. And we've got some great resources to help us do just that. Yeah. We've got a bunch of advice from you know, financial experts on YouTube, some really helpful articles too, all kind of tackling this same question. Real people, real strategies. Hopefully by the end, we'll all have a clearer path forward. What do you think? I think what's so interesting is that it really depends on your own situation. You can't just look at the numbers. You really have to understand how different claiming ages could play out in your life. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, we've all heard, you know, claim early, get money now. But is it yeah. really that simple? Well, let's break it down a little. We hear terms like full retirement age or FRA, uh -huh. primary insurance amount or PIA, delayed retirement credits. They sound kind of jargony, I know. Right. But they're really the keys to unlocking this whole thing. Okay, so FRA. That's the age you can start claiming your full benefits, right? Mm -hmm. Like no penalties, no reductions. Exactly. And for most of us, that's 67. But here's the thing. You can actually start as early as 62 or delay all the way to 70. Oh, so there's the early bird option, but I'm guessing there's a catch. There is. Claiming early means a smaller check every month for the rest of your life. Oh, okay. Now, delaying past your FRA, that's where things get interesting. That's when you earn those delayed retirement credits. Okay, so like a bonus for being patient. Tell me more about these credits. Think of it like earning interest on your future Social Security checks. Every year you delay past your FRA, you're basically getting an 8% bump on your monthly payment. Mm -hmm. And that really adds up. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I can see where this whole delaying might be better idea comes from. Yeah. But how do we know if it's the right move for us as individuals? That's where your PIA comes in, your primary insurance amount. It's the monthly benefit you would get if you claimed at your full retirement age. It's based on your earnings history, how much oh. you paid into Social Security over the years. So more earnings equals higher PIA. Exactly. And knowing your PIA is important because it lets you see how much you could gain or lose by claiming early or late. Right. The Financial Fast Lane video uses a great example. Let's say your PIA is $2,000 a month at 67. If you claim at 62, you'd only get about $1,400. But wait till 70, it jumps to $2,640. Wow, that's a big difference. No wonder everyone was debating this. Right. It's this trade-off. Do you want more money now, even if it's less overall? Or are you in it for the long haul, aiming for those bigger checks later on? And this is where it gets real for a lot of people. You might need that money sooner rather than later. Exactly. It's not just about maximizing some theoretical number. It's about your needs and your goals right. and your personal situation. Okay, so how do we even begin to figure out what's best for us? That's what we're here for. We're going to dig into the factors that might make claiming early or late a better choice. All right, I like it. Yeah. And we'll look at some real life examples too, so you can see how this actually plays out for different people. Make sure you visit BrianGarbin.com. That's Brian with an I and get your free affiliate guide titled 10 Steps to Becoming a Super Affiliate. Over 12,300 words of life-changing information. Simply submit your name and email and click the verification link sent to your email address. The link for this is in Brian's YouTube bio. I'm already feeling a little bit more prepared to deal with all of this. So what's the first big factor we should be thinking about when trying to decide when to claim? Well, it might seem obvious, but it's easy to overlook your health mm -hmm. and how long you expect to live. Longevity is huge EE in deciding whether claiming early or late makes more sense financially. Yeah, that makes sense. The longer you live, the more those larger checks from delaying will add up. Right. Exactly. But it's not always that simple. There's this concept called the break-even point, and it's something the Financial Fast Lane video talks about. It's basically the age where the total benefits even out, whether you claimed early or late. Gotcha. So if you live past that break-even point, delaying really starts to pay off. Exactly. But here's where it gets interesting. That break-even point can change based on a lot of things, like your investment returns. Okay. They give the example of age 79 as a typical break-even point. But if you're a good investor and you consistently beat the market, that break-even age could drop significantly, making delaying even more appealing. Mm, that's a great point. It's not just about how long you live, but how well you manage your money during those years. You got it. And we're just scratching the surface here. We haven't even talked about spousal benefits right. for what happens if you're still working while claiming. Ooh. 
Okay, this is getting good. We're about to dive into those specific scenarios and really get into the nitty gritty in part two of this deep dive. Make sure you visit BrianGarvin.com, that's Brian with an I, and get your free affiliate guide titled 10 Steps to Becoming a Super Affiliate. Mm -hmm. Over 12,300 words of life-changing information. Simply submit your name and email and click the verification link sent to your email address. The link for this is in Brian's YouTube bio. So we talked about how your health and how long you might live can affect your claiming strategy. But what about your love life? You know, specifically, what if you're married? Does that change things? Yeah, you know, I was thinking about that. My aunt and uncle are always arguing about when to claim their benefits. Oh. They seem to think they have to decide at the same time. Is that true? That's a common misunderstanding. You don't have to claim at the same time as your spouse. Okay. Actually, coordinating your strategies can be really powerful, especially if one spouse has a way higher PIA than the other. Huh. Oh, that makes sense. So, like, if one spouse has a way higher PIA, maybe they should delay to max out their benefits while the other spouse claims early if they need to. Exactly. Both the Financial Fast Lane and Streamline Financial videos had some good examples of how couples can optimize their benefits. Okay. One scenario they highlight is the file and suspend strategy, where the higher earner files for benefits at their FRA, but then immediately suspends them. Hold on. Why would you suspend them after filing? Seems kind of counterintuitive. It's all about maximizing that spousal benefit. Mm. By filing and suspending, the higher earner lets their lower earning spouse claim a spousal benefit, which can be up to half of their PIA. Okay. Meanwhile, the higher earner is still racking up those delayed retirement credits, so they end up with a bigger benefit later. Oh, so it's like a win-win. They both get a boost. Exactly. There are other strategies, too. Another one is the restricted application. This is for couples where one spouse hits their FRA while the other is still working. The spouse at FRA can file a restricted application, choosing to only receive the spousal benefit based on their working spouse's record. So that lets the working spouse's benefits keep growing until they decide to claim. Exactly. This can be a great way to max out the couple's combined lifetime benefits, especially if the working spouse is planning to delay claiming until 70. Sounds like there's a lot of potential there with spousal benefits. Well, I'm a little overwhelmed, though. Any easy way to sort through all these scenarios? The Social Security website is a great place to start, ssa.gov. Okay. They have calculators where you can model different claiming scenarios yeah. based on your specific situation. Well, that's good to know. Yeah. So far, we've mostly talked about people who are retired. What about those of us who are still working and thinking about claiming early? That adds a whole other layer of complexity. Right. The Charles Schwab article gets into this. If you claim Social Security before your FRA while you're still working, your benefits might be reduced. Oh, really? Yeah. There's an earnings limit. Yeah. And if you go over it, they'll deduct part of your benefits. So working and claiming early could backfire. It could. Especially if you're earning a good income. The reduction might not be worth it, especially when you think about those benefits being permanently lower. Yeah, that's a really important point. It's not just about whether you can claim early. It's whether it actually makes financial sense for you. Yeah. With your income. Exactly. And it reminds us that Social Security isn't one size fits all. There are so many variables. What works for one person might not work for another. Right. Mm -hmm. So we've covered health, life expectancy, being married, working while claiming. Anything else people should consider when deciding when to claim? There is one more factor that often gets missed, yeah. and it's a big one. The future of Social Security itself. Oh, yeah. The whole, will it even be there when I retire question. Yeah, exactly. It's the elephant in the room. No. We'd be doing you a disservice if we didn't talk about it. Mm -hmm. Remember earlier we mentioned the Social Security Trust Fund is projected to be depleted by 2035? Now, that doesn't mean benefits will just disappear, but... It's not exactly reassuring. What does that mean for those of us counting on those benefits for retirement? Well, the most likely outcome is some combination of reduced benefits or increased taxes to keep things going. Okay. And that uncertainty makes planning even more important. So what are we supposed to do? Panic and claim early, just in case. Panic is never a strategy. The key is to be informed and proactive and have a backup plan. Instead of worrying about what might happen with Social Security, focus on what you can control. Okay, that makes sense. What are some things we could do to feel more secure about our retirement, even with this uncertainty? There are a few key things. Number one, save and invest as much as you can. Okay. The more you have in your own retirement accounts, the less you'll have to rely on Social Security. Think of it as a safety net, not the foundation of your plan. Right. So even if benefits are reduced later, we'll have something to fall back on. What else? 
Consider delaying retirement if you can. Even working a few extra years can make a big difference. You can save more delay claiming and potentially get a higher benefit. That's true. And I bet those extra years of working could boost your PIA too, right? Exactly. Every year you work and pay into Social Security can potentially replace a lower earning year from earlier in your career, leading to a higher PIA and bigger benefits. Okay, so save more work longer. What's the third tip? Explore other ways to make money. Part-time work, rental income, even a side hustle. Having multiple streams of income can give you more flexibility and peace of mind, especially when things are uncertain. I like that. It's like diversifying your retirement portfolio, not just your investments. Exactly. It's all about building a safety net that can handle whatever comes your way. Okay. I'm feeling a lot better knowing there are things we can do to protect our retirement, even with the uncertainty around Social Security. What's next? Now that we've got the basics down and covered those key factors, it's time to get more tactical. In part three, we'll look at some real world examples of how people made this decision. Okay, I like it. And we'll give you some resources to help you create your own strategy. Okay, so we've talked about all the ins and outs of Social Security, mm -hmm. the, those key terms, all the factors that might make claiming early or late a smarter move. But I feel like seeing how it works for real people, that's what makes it click. You're so right. Theory's great, but mm -hmm. sometimes you need to see it in action to really get it. And the cool thing is we've got some case studies from our sources to help with that. Awesome. Let's jump into some real life examples. Anything that really stood out to you? Well, the Prana Wealth video had this comparison between two guys, Pilot Pete and Chef Steve. They were in almost the same financial spot, same age, similar savings. But Pete decided to claim Social Security at 62. Steve waited till 70. Oh, yeah. I remember that one. It's like a real-life experiment to see how claiming age plays out over time. So what happened? Pretty much what you'd expect. Pete got that money right away. But because he claimed early, that amount was lower. Steed had to use his savings for a while. But then when he hit 70, boom, he got a much bigger benefit. I think their wives were part of it too, weren't they? They were. It was a good example of how coordinating those spousal benefits can really change the outcome. Pete's wife, Sally, claimed early too. So smaller benefits for both of them. But Steve's wife, Susie... She waited till 70 with him, so they both got those bigger checks. So even though Steve and Susie had used their savings longer, they ended up better off in the long run. Exactly. The video showed some simulations, and even with using those savings early on, Steve and Susie were more likely to have a successful retirement. It really shows how powerful those delayed retirement credits are. They compound over time, especially with those cost of living adjustments. It's like the tortoise and the hare. Slow and steady wins the social security race. Can we all just copy Steve's strategy, though? Is that the answer? That's the thing about these case studies. They give us insights, but we can't just assume they'll work for everyone. Pete and Steve's story is just one example. It makes assumptions about life expectancy and investment returns and how much they spend. And those can be totally different for each person. So how do we apply these lessons to our own lives? Where do we even start? That's where research and maybe some personalized advice come in. We've mentioned the Social Security website, ssa.gov. It's really helpful. They have calculators you can use to play with different claiming ages and see how it could impact your benefits. Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. That sounds useful. Anything else people should be doing to make sure they're making the right call for the situation? For truly personalized advice, I'd recommend talking to a financial advisor. They can look at your whole financial picture, your income savings, investments, goals, the whole shebang. Right. And help you come up with a social security strategy that fits with your retirement plan. It's like Social Security isn't just a one-off decision. It's part of this bigger retirement picture. Exactly. And a good advisor can help you see how all those pieces go together. They can help with those tricky situations too, like coordinating with a spouse or what to do if you're still working. This has been amazing. We've gone from the basics of how Social Security works to real-life stories and resources for making a decision. As we wrap up, is there one key thing you want listeners to remember when they're thinking about this when to claim question? The most important thing is to remember there's no right answer for everyone. Social security is complicated and your best claiming age depends on you. But with a little research and planning and maybe some guidance from an expert, you can make a choice that sets you up for a great retirement. Well said. And that's a wrap on our deep dive into when to start claiming social security benefits. We covered a lot, but hopefully you're walking away feeling more confident about how to tackle this decision. Absolutely. And remember, even though it can feel overwhelming, you have the power to make an informed choice that works for you. 
Until next time, keep learning, keep exploring, 